How long had that uh, contract reworking been been in the works there? Yeah, the contract was talked about it pretty much this whole offseason. And it was just something I wanted to get done before we started. Um, and I was happy that it was got done and super excited to be here for you know the next next two years. And I think it's just kind of sends a, a message to a lot of the guys that are coming up is you know, I take pride in what I've done here and um, try to do things the right way, uh, lead by example and you know show up and do my job as the highest ability I can and you know, I think it was a uh, you know great respect by the front office to you know they didn't have to do this and it was just something that I'm very appreciative of and I think a lot of guys you know kind of see it as you know if you do the things the right way you work hard and you know keep your keep yourself out of uh, you know out of trouble and you're gonna get you can get rewarded so I was uh, you know super excited and and grateful to uh, you know the York family and the front office to you know, allowed me this opportunity to continue my career here and I'm you know, super excited to get going in this season. When you broke your orbital bone <coughs> in the fall, you I mean, the, you guys were not in the playoffs. You didn't yeah. have to come back. Looking back on it now. I was blown out of proportion. Why do you say that? The, it, was, it was an injury that was a weak injury. You know, okay. it wasn't. And if I'm healthy, I'm not going to sit there and sit on the sidelines while my you know, teammates go out there and play. So regardless of what records are, if I'm healthy, I'm always going to be out there in the field giving everything I have. So, yeah, I don't think it's so you a didn't cool. Do it, with great it wasn't like I was, yeah, it was like some great. I think a lot of people would, you know, I'd, I'd hope a lot of guys would do the same thing. But does it speak to your relationship with the coaching staff that you were eager to be a part of the rest of the season, even though, you know, things were... Yeah, I mean, I think Kyle has always talked about that too. We learned a lot about our football team last year, especially in that 0-9 stretch of guys that were, you know, coming to work every single day and and you know, doing everything they could to to improve themselves and improve the team. Um, and I think we saw that in the last you know five six games of the season where we went on that little run there. But that was all because of the first you know nine ten weeks. And that was what was so exciting about last year was. Um, you know, the mentality in the, in the locker room that we, we kind of built throughout the season. Um, it was just really cool to be a part of. But I think everybody was kind of having to prove to them, to the new ownership, or not new ownership, but new, you know, front office, basically, uh, new coaching staff. A lot of guys didn't, didn't really know what you're made of, and you get to know people when you have adversity like that. And so, um, yeah, I think they'll look at, they looked at that and saw that. I mean, I'm all about football and just want to come out there and do my job. So, um, yeah. Joe, you, you're, you've been here for every variation of ups and downs, and in the or, in the offseason, the organization quarterback signed up long term, acquisition of other players on the offensive line. How encouraged are you at this point that this thing's headed in the right direction as you near, very, near the end of your career? You know, and, yeah, very encouraged. I mean, I think it's one of the things that's got me so excited going into you know year twelve. You know, I feel young. I feel really, really good physically, uh, mentally. Feel really, really good. Really excited. Um, but yeah, because of what we were able to do last season, I mean, even the whole entire season, like I said, with the adversity we faced, the way we kind of, you know, worked through that, the locker room that we have here is really special. Just really excited to be a part of that. And then kind of being like a veteran role, um, I'm excited for that opportunity to you know, try to impart some wisdom on, on some of the young guys that will, you know, carry this franchise in the you know, coming decade. So really excited to have, uh, you know, obviously Jimmy here locked up long term, kind of some... Uh, you know, semblance of you know, a solid foundation that we've got built here. And, you know, we got some draft picks to come up in the, this weekend to, to play with and added some really key parts in our offense in this offseason. So excited to get going. Obviously, you're really close to Daniel Kilgore. Yeah. Um, how quickly can you build a close relationship with your new center? Yeah, I love Weston. And Daniel, I've t I mean, I talked to Daniel for like two weeks when that whole thing was going on. And I told him like every single time, like, dude, we're not going to be like not friends anymore because you're not going to be here. So stop freaking out. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to Miami. It's going to be an awesome deal, man. There's good people down there. It's just, you know, it's just the way it is. It's a business, and I've been around long enough. And Daniel's been around, around long enough. You know, he was just, you know, he was kind of bummed that he he wasn't going to be a part of here because he was excited about being here and and what we were building. But, you know, talking to him now down there, he's he's real excited for the opportunity he has down there. He doesn't have to look over his shoulder constantly. You know, it's kind of kind of, you know, a little bit of a. Uh, you know, he's the man down there at that center position. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're still going to be really, really close. And, you know, I'm not looking at Weston like he took my buddy's job. I mean, it's a business. And, and Weston's had a track record of being a great center in the NFL. And, you know, we expect him to come in and, 
and, and plug right in and, and do a great job for us. Hey, Joe, everything uh, has, like you said, it's been going so well, the offices mm -hmm. and everything. Is it disappointing to have the ribbon foster situation kind of be really now a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it is. Anytime you hear anything that's going on with the domestic violence, it's super serious and it's something you don't want to have to deal with. Um, you know, I think our, our front office and what they've done is a really great job of of communicating with us with what's going on and um, you know he's not here right now but you know they're waiting until all the facts are out there but they've made it very clear if he did what he's being accused of he's not going to be here so you know I think that's a message to anybody that you keep your you know keep yourself out of trouble in the off season and you do, do right by you know those around you and especially all this stuff I and mean, I don't have to tell anybody how I feel about all this but yeah it's, it's disappointing but you know at this at the end of the day you know, you're gonna let due process go and and, and it is what it is. Joe, if they hadn't, I, based on what you said, it didn't sound like you broached the contract at Cox. If they hadn't done anything with your contract, would you still have been a happy camper? Because, I mean, obviously, you were. I would have been here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you were not, you know, going to make a stink about it. Is that right? Yeah, I would have been here. <laughs> That's all I say. <laughs> I'm very happy with how everything turned out. You know. Was there any talk during that whole thing of adding years to to the contract? I mean, have you thought about the end? I mean, we saw Joe Thomas. Yeah, no, I haven't actually really have it. Um, I mean, I had that little you know blip last year where I was dealing with some um, you know injury issues, not really injury, just like body fatigue kind of and. Started having for the first time in my life, really thinking about like, like you said, like end of career kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I'm so far gone from that now, and I'm just really looking forward to this year and then next year in my career. And then, you know, who knows if I feel great, I might play another another two, three, eighteen. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think that um, you made a decision early on in your career that you know I'm not going to get up to 325, 330. I'm going to play at a weight I'm comfortable yeah. with. Do you think that that has added years to the end of your, your career? Yeah, I mean, I think I definitely made a conscious effort. I mean, I was, if you remember, I don't know, you were here. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was real fat. I got <laughs> I it to be, I was fat. fat, I was fat. I got it to be about 330 pounds one year in my third year off season. I couldn't move. It felt sluggish all the time and kind of made the, the change that off season was like, I'm not going to be that. I'm trying to, you know, I'm not going to sacrifice what made me an NFL player to try to be some kind of size that, Everybody thinks I have to be so. I think definitely, yeah, it's it helped with my longevity and just kind of being mobile, uh, mobile, and uh, working on flexibility and all that stuff, and just training hard. You know, I think it's uh, I never really have taken like breaks um, in the off season. You know, it's just always kind of training mode and just kind of get my, you know, mind and body ready for the rigors of the NFL season. I've been very lucky too with injuries. I've not had anything. And that's also luck, you know. I'm not going to sit up here and say that I've done everything right. I've just been really lucky with injury. I haven't had anything ma major, so, you know, my knees and everything feel really good. I'm ready to go. What, what, what weight do you play at during, you know, what are you mid Um, today? Typically 295, yeah. So, yeah. So do you ever, uh, this time of year, we're all looking at offensive line prospects and breaking them down. Mm -hmm. Have you ever ventured into that? Like pre-draft analysis and just kind of scout. No, not the analysis, analysis, but I do work out with uh, guys that my agent. So my agent's down in Southern California. He's based out of Irvine, and all the guys that he signs uh, work out just right there in Irvine, uh, Orange County area. So it's about a 45-minute drive, and I get up there usually two, two days a week mm -hmm. um, work out with all the offensive line guys this year. So this year was uh, Brian O'Neill from Pitt, um, Austin Corbett uh, from Nevada, and then uh, – my buddy Coleman there from uh, shoot, where did he go to school? He was there for two days. Washington. <laughs> um, so I worked out with those guys and um, just did offensive line drills and all that stuff. But yeah, it's I don't like it. Yeah, yeah, it's hard for me to just kind of coach. Coaching is a learned skill. You mentioned that things started dragging at, the, at one point last year, and it seems like also beyond the physical boost, you got a little bit of emotional boost. I remember how happy you were after the, the win over the Giants. Mm -hmm. Was that kind of the turning point, or was just getting a lot of wins there toward the end of the season something that gave you more fuel? 
Me personally, yeah, yeah, talking yeah. about that. No, that was more uh, physically. I was for the about first eight weeks of the season dealing with I had a pretty bad hip, hip impingement that I was kind of working through. Um, it was causing my knees to experience a lot of the pain because you know it's all the chain and all that stuff. You know that science stuff they talk about. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I had a, a pretty bad hip impingement that I was kind of working out, and then finally kind of kind of released, and was uh, yeah, my knees started feeling better, and then. You know, once I was good, I was I was back to playing normal. Um, I haven't experienced anything since then. I really don't even know what really caused that. I think it was just something got caught up in there and muscles got tight and bound up. But um, yeah, that was more anything. Just what was causing causing me like, oh man, I'm not playing like I usually play. I'm not feeling how I usually feel. You know, and just kind of that. Oh man, I'm getting old. You know, but uh, still feel young and ready to go. Did that hip hip impingement uh, affect your mobility or strength or was it more a pain issue? Uh, everything. I mean, it was affect my mobility, strength, um, there was, it was pain. Um, yeah, it just was causing me to, to not play as, you know, as explosive and as strong as, you know, I'd like to. And, um, and it was because of the pain that I was dealing with in my knees and all that stuff. So I just wasn't playing to what I thought my standard was, should, my, my standard is and should be. Now, yeah. now that Jimmy's signed his contract, is it, I mean, I know it seemed like talking to the guys, they, he took over a, a pretty strong leadership role in the locker room. Is is that important to for him to evolve in, <coughs> into that natural leader now that he signed that big contract in the position he plays? Everybody's going to look at him regardless because he's the quarterback. You know, he's naturally going to fall into that, and I don't think it's something that's forced upon him. You know, I think he's just that kind of personality. I mean, he's very businesslike on the football field. Gets along with a lot of guys. You know, it's not something that he's he's not an awkward human being. Like it's forced for him to be a social person and. You know, have camaraderie and all that stuff you look for, um, but he's all ve he's very businesslike, very serious on the football field. Has a high standard of himself and people around him. So, I think it's going to be pretty natural for him. It's not going to be something that he's going to be all of a sudden changing because he signed a contract or whatnot. And I think it's kind of expected that people are going to look at you and you have to conduct yourself a certain way. And I think you know, in turn, because of his traits and that, that's probably why they gave him a, a contract. Is you know, it has a little bit of something to do with. And why we, we feel very strongly how we feel about him and, and locked him up for the future.